Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with a brand new series on the channel with Sampdoria in Syria and obviously, as you can probably tell, with my face cam and Batman. Batman's up there somewhere. So yeah, this is going to be a brand new series I've got for face cam, got gone for face cam as well. However, it might not be there all the time. So make use of it. I'm not sure what you're going to make use of, but yeah, you know what I mean. It's going to be there for some episodes, possibly not for others. So yeah, first episode, let's jump straight in. Sampdoria then, obviously in Serie A, were founded in 1946, so they're about 70-something years old. They are, historically, they were one of the teams that I remember growing up as a kid. They were in the Italian 90, Italian 90, what I'm talking about, the, uh, whatever the Channel 4 TV show was, the the Football Italia, they were one of the teams that I remember vividly from that. I have had a look at their history, their competitions. They won the uh, the Syria. They won Syria in 1991. Champions League runners up in 1992. They won the European Cup Winners Cup in 1990. But they've not really won a huge amount. I say this full well knowing that they've only been around for 70 years and they've won Syria. So they won some things. I'm hoping to be able to try and win some more things for them. Before I started recording this as well, I have had a look at the squad. I've kind of worked out what I need to do, whether I need to buy some new players. I don't think I do. I honestly don't think I need to buy any new players. We've got a reasonable squad. We've got a big squad, but everyone in Italy always seems to have a very big squad. This is our first team, and this is only players who are currently at the club. Then if we go to our under 23s, let's do that, under 20, sorry. Uh, yeah, this it's it's definitely Italy, isn't it? It's definitely Italy. There's a lot of players there. Our under-18s as well has a few, and if I'm perfectly honest, I'm trying to clear out a lot of them. I know in Italy they always hoard players. I don't know why, but they always seem to hoard players. So what I'm going to try and do is not do that, and that goes against every single grain that I've ever decided to go for whenever I play Football Manager. I always love to hoard young players, and I don't want to do that realistically with Sampdoria. Also, we have about 30 feeder clubs or affiliate clubs. Most of them do nothing, do literally nothing. I mean, this one, we can buy their first um, first option for young players. First option for young players. A local partnership, that's fine. That's a good one. A mutually beneficial relationship with Chevio. No one gets any money for it. Why, why have we got it? So I'm going to clear out pretty much all of these. Any of the ones that are fairly useless, there's a lot of hit ones here as well that we can loan players out to amateur sides in Italy. I don't think we need to do that. I don't think we have any place to do that. I have also built myself a tactic which will inevitably fail miserably, but this is what I'm going to try and play. It is a 4-2-3-1 with one striker, three attacking midfielders. This isn't the best starting eleven, but it's certainly one of our best starting 11s. We're probably going to change various positions as the season goes on. I really want to try a different tactic. For my last two saves for Southport and for Newcastle, we've kind of been playing the same tactic. So I want to try and change things up a little bit. I was also contemplating going for a 4-4-2 because it's very Italian. But we're going to go against that for now at the very least. The final thing that I want to mention before we try and get into the save properly is the club vision. So, you will notice there, end of the current season, they're all mid-table in Syria. That's fine, that's not a problem. End of the next season, looking to sell the club. So our chairman literally doesn't want to be here, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It does make me think that when he eventually does sell the club, we are in potential trouble when it comes to appointing a new manager, because we might get fired... Purely because if we're doing below par, if we're not mid-table, if we're under mid-table, we're fighting relegation, I can't see why any new chairman would want to keep us on. I'm hoping we're not going to be doing that. I'm hoping we're going to be mid-table for the first season. Right, let's start cancelling some of these. So anyone who's amateur, it's gone. I don't I don't want it. May not be cancelled for another... For Wait, what? When can that get cancelled? 24th of the 7th. Right, so we can cancel it soon. Right, okay. So I'm guessing that can't be done until the 24th of the 8th. Right, so I need to go and cancel these at a later date. I can get rid of that one. Let's get rid of this one. Don't need you. Go away. ERG can go. We can get rid of that one. That's good. You can go as well. There's, I mean, any amateur sides, I don't see the point in us being able to loan players to them. This one I'm going to keep because they're not Italian. It's a Portuguese side. I mean, we get nothing from it and it's just financial benefits. However, we can send players on loan there. Can we send players on loan? We can. Okay. Napoli can send players on loan to Sampdoria, but 
I don't... No, I don't want that. I don't want them to just send me people. Palmer. We just play a friendly. What, what's the point? We're also going to keep this one because they're a professional side. So, yeah, there's still plenty more that I need to get rid of. I might keep this one as well as they're semi-professional. But, yeah, anyone who's amateur, don't see the point in having them as a feeder club. Now, obviously, Italy has some big, big sides. Some very big sides. Juventus or Zebra, Inter Milan, Napoli, Roma, Lazio and AC Milan are the top six there. Those are very, very strong sides. They then have the second half of the league. The Lecce's, the Brescia's, the Verona's, the Spal's, Udinese, Bologna, Parma, Genoa, Sassuolo, and even our Sampdoria, Cagliari, you can chuck in there as well. So, yeah, there's there. this is definitely a league of two leagues, isn't it? There are two definite leagues in this. I'm hoping we are the best of the worst league. So, I'm aiming to finish maybe 8th. They reckon we're going to finish in 11th place, but I'll I'll take 11th, but I want to finish a little bit higher than that if I can. And our two key players is Albin Ekdal. Albin Ekdal, central midfielder from Sweden. Yes, he is good. I do like Albin. And the other one is Carol Linetti, a player who I signed for Napoli a few seasons ago when I did a save with Napoli and just did awfully bad. It was in the beta, got sacked, ended up at Crystal Palace. think I got sacked from there as well. Some things to remember then, playing in Italy, they have this strange transfer rule, which means, where is it, I can only sign two non-EU players per season, and I think we've already done it, I think we've already done it, so, transfer rules, if a club has three or more non-EU players in their squad, then, including those blah 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 blah, they can only sign and register up to two new non-EU players. So yeah, there's kind of rules to basically prevent the clubs signing too many non-EU players and populating the league with a, uh, with Brazilians and so on. So yeah, what we're going to try and do, or what I'm going to try and do, is I'm going to try and build an Italian squad. That's going to be my goal. I am going to be investing in youth players. I am going to be getting decent youth players from around the world. But ultimately, I really want to try and get Italian players. I don't know how easy that's going to be. Especially as our youth facilities are... They're good. They're okay. Junior coaching as well, adequate, adequate recruitment, so we probably need to try and do something with that. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe soon, first season, maybe we need to try and invest in that a bit. That's going to do it then for the intro. What I am going to do now is I'm going to go all the way through to probably the Roma game, the first game of the season. I'm going to play all of the pre-season off camera. I'm going to do transfers. I think the transfer window shuts after the Atalanta game, so we do still potentially have the opportunity to sign some more players before we play our next match or our next couple of games. So, yeah, what I'm going to do, going to go through all the way through pre-season. We're actually going to play the Italian Cup third qualifying round thing as well. Probably play some absolute garbage in that and lose 1-0. Team meeting time then. What are we going to say to the squad? Hello, I am the new manager of Sampdoria. We'll start off with that. It's always a good place to start with something like that. Um, top half or mid table? I think we, we have to say mid table. Okay, good. We nailed it. And I'll just click the top one because it's the code of conduct. Well, on the 27th of July then, our first choice left back has gone and got himself injured for seven to eight months. I think we do have a second left back, so I don't think it's the end of the world, but that's not ideal. We do. We have Nicola Muru. I guess he's going to have to be our number one left back now for pretty much the whole season. So we've now gone to the 21st of August. We are three days, just three days away from our opening league fixture against Roma. We have played one match in between recording bits. I nearly said episode, in between recording bits, which we have won, wasn't particularly convincing. It was a 1-0 victory against Catanzaro in the cup. It's Carol Lanetti with the goal. Pretty good goal. I think Quagliarella, I think that's how you say his name, did might, might have got a touch on the ball, but it doesn't matter. Carol Lanetti is claiming it. We are through to the first proper round of the Italian Cup. We have also done some signings. We have loaned in a new left back to basically replace our injured left back of Dodo. We have also signed two players at the moment. One of them from FC Copenhagen, one of them on a free transfer. We've actually signed two Danish players. That's weird. There are two more players who are hopefully going to be joining the club before the end of the episode as well. And also, one player has left the club. Leaving the club then is 35-year-old Paraguayan central midfielder Edgar Barreto. He's basically gone because he's old. He's not bad, he's just old, and I don't really like old footballers. Anyone over 32 is past it, in my opinion, and I say that as a 34-year-old. 
Joining the club then first up on loan from Corinthians in Brazil is Carlos Augusto. He is our left back. He has been signed to replace Dodo for the season. He's actually Italian. He's Brazilian and Italian, so he doesn't count as a non-EU player, which is very handy. Two and a half star current ability, four star potential. So he's probably not going to play a huge amount of football for us, but he's a decent option for the season. The first of two Danish players to join the club is Marco Ramkilder, formerly of AAB, currently out with torn ankle ligaments, but he'll be back in six to 12 days. He has been brought in on a free transfer. Basically, I kind of think he might look good. He might have some potential. I might just sell him on for some money. No real plan for Marco here. And finally for now, at the very least, is Matthias Jakobsen, 16 years old. I have experience with Matthias Jakobsen. When I took over Newcastle United, he was already at the club and he turned into a very, very good footballer. So I thought let's jump in there early and get him whilst he's still young. We have signed Matthias Jakobsen from FC Copenhagen. One and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. Central defender, central midfielder. He's cost us £500,000. And I think that's it. I don't think there's any additional add-ons. No, nothing at all on top of it. So yeah, Matthias Jakobsen might be here for a lot of time to come. So that is it for transfers so far. We've got three days until we play Roma and then we will kick off our season and hopefully get a draw. That's what I'm after. I know Roma are one of the better sides in the league, so it's not going to be an easy match. Match number one then of the Serie A season is up against Roma, a team who are apparently expected to finish 5th in the table. We are expected to finish 11th, so on paper, Roma are the better side, and even the odds do say that as well. Evens, we are 11-5, to five, which is the same for a draw. Well, that's not a good thing, is it? That's not good. The starting lineup that we're going to go for then in goal is going to be Aduero. I have no idea how to pronounce half of these players' names, so please bear with me for at least the first... Three or four episodes whilst I just balls everything up. It's going to be Muru, Colley, Tonelli and Berezinski as that back four. Rolando, Ronaldo, Rolando, Ronaldo Vieira and Carol Linetti will be the central midfielders. The two former Southampton men, Manolo Gabbiadini and Gaston Ramirez will be on the wings with Moroni and Quagliarella. Possibly that's going to be a difficult name to say, but he's going to be our striker. Also, Quagliarella, by the way, is apparently the odds-on favourite to be second top scorer. That is not odds-on favourite. He's odds-on to be second top scorer in Syria. That's quite bad because I don't think he's going to be that good. If we can get a draw, if we can get a draw from the first game of the season, I will be happy with that. Ideally, I'd like a goal. I'd like a goal. Vera Toot with a corner for Roma. Edin Dzeko's there. 10 minutes, 17 seconds. We're 1-0 down. We definitely need a goal now. Throw for us. Berezinski takes it to Moroni. Manolo Gabbiadini back to the throw taker. Berezinski on the right. A little back flick to Manolo Gabbiadini. Edge of the area. Carol Lanetti, who's already got one goal to his name this season. Now he's got two. Both of them pretty spectacular. Well, 20 minutes in, and it's actually pretty even. Three shots on target apiece out of three in total. A goal apiece as well. We've got a highlight with Collie on the ball. Plays it all the way back to the goalkeeper, Aduero. Or Ordero? Is it Ordero? Maybe that's what it is. Lorenzo Tonelli, who I had for Everton, maybe? I'm sure I've bought Tonelli before. I'm not quite sure who for. Colley to Vieira, back to Colley, forward. It's Gaston Ramirez isn't going to get there. Zanolio back to Mancini. Now it looks like Roma are going to pass it around. Zappa Costa, the former Chelsea man on the right. Zanolio into the penalty area, blast into the back of the net. It's 2-1 to Roma. Moroni with a corner for us just a couple of minutes later. The ball is headed clear by Chris Smalling. And Zanolio can now break down that right-hand side for Roma. We've got no one there. We've got no one there at all. Vieira gets back to stick in a foot and wins the ball. Now Manolo Gabbiadini, possibly a counter-attack for us. Has to go backwards instead, though. Lorenzo Tonelli over the top. Gabbiadini, it's not, it's actually it's Berezinski controls it. Into the area, Gaston Ramirez on the head. And the winger makes it 2-2 after 22 minutes. There's a lot of twos there. I'm starting to think that we need to learn how to defend. We know how to clearly score goals. We don't know how to defend at the moment. We've got ourselves a throw with Muru to take it to Moroni, who's picked up a yellow card. Ronaldo Vieira's going to collect the ball. The Englishman, formerly of Leeds United, if I remember correctly, goes back to Colley. On the left is Muru. Lots and lots of space. Where's he going to go, though? He's going to get tackled by Zappa Costa, and Roma potentially can break once again. Muru just trips him. Zanolio keeps hold of the ball, though. Dodges a tackle from Vieira. Loads of space into Eden Dzeko. His effort is just wide of the near post. It is still 2-2. Moroni's not having a good game. 
attacking midfielders, attacking midfielders in this version of Football Manager, I cannot get to work at all. I have never had a decent performing attacking midfielder, so I don't know why I'm trying to play with one. We're 2-2 two, two at half time. We're looking all right. This tactic is a work in progress, so maybe we need to try and change some things up. Maybe we have him hold up ball. I don't know. Is it a good thing? Because then maybe he can help the, uh, hope that Ramirez and Gabbiadini and Quagliarella get involved. Maybe that's what we need to do. Otherwise, he is getting substituted. Jordan Veratout with a free kick for Roma. Mancini is there and Gianluca Mancini makes it 3-2. Every, every attack they have basically ends in a goal, doesn't it? We've had four highlights, I think, for Roma and they've scored three of them. We just need to learn how to defend. Perotti with a corner for Roma. Back post is Mancini. His headed effort is over the bar. We've got 32 minutes to play to try and find an equaliser. And ideally a winner. I'd take a draw. I said this earlier. I will take a draw. That's what we need to go for. Moroni needs to come off. We're going to bring on Felice Diamico, who is on loan from Inter Milan. And apparently he's joining permanently. We're going to try him as... What do we try him as? Attacking midfielder on support, maybe. Just playing around. Let's give that a go. 20 minutes to play. I'm going to give him a demand more. Mkhitaryan has the ball for Roma. Back to Kolarov, the former Man City man. Now Jordan Veratout, the former Aston Villa man, I think. He, he definitely played in England, didn't he? Mkhitaryan to Pellegrini, forward to Zanolio. Plays the ball across on the left. Justin Clive is probably going to keep it in play for Roma. Berezinski nicks it away. Now Gabiadini. Don't get tackled. He's been tackled by Kolarov. And now Kolarov into the penalty area. Zacho's effort is blocked by Colley. We get the ball clear, but Chris Smalling can potentially bring the ball back or not. Just play it all the way back to his goalkeeper instead. Lopez upfield finds Mkhitaryan to Pellegrini. Roma still having the ball, though. Down onto the right-hand side. Zanolio has it. Is he going to cross it? Does so. It's Clive that's there. Header hits the top of the bar. We've got 20 minutes to try and find an equaliser. Quagliarella's having a bit of a shocker as well. He's on a 6.6, so he's not too bad. He's not doing anything. We're going to do Lagamina. Who is Lagamina? He's this guy. He's all right. He's on loan from Empoli. Apparently, he's joining permanently because all of our transfers seem to be joining permanently. I don't really know why. I have nothing to do with that, but sure. Berezinski with a throw. Ten minutes left. Crosses in. It's Gaston Ramirez, but he can't get there. Pellegrini now. Potentially a counter-attack for Roma. Not good. Justin Clivert keeps running forward into the space. Onto that right-hand side. Goes for a goal. It's saved. And Berezinski stops the ball going behind for a corner. Right. So what I'm taking from this is we can score goals. We've had just seven chances and scored twice. We also concede goals for fun. They've had 17 shots, only eight on target, but managed to put three of them in the back of the net. It is a 3-2 defeat against Roma. It's not the best start, but they are one of the better teams in the league. Well, luckily for us, there were seven, eight matches that ended up in victories, which means we are only in 13th place in the table. Verona losing 4-0 to AC Milan, the big one, putting them at the bottom of the table and AC Milan at the top. That is probably going to do it then for the first episode of this save. What we are going to do next episode, we are probably going to go and play Atalanta and maybe Fiorentina. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet. I've not worked out. We might do sort of sandwich episodes where we have one episode at the start, a bunch of highlights in the middle, and then another match at the end. Or we might just do the way I normally do, which is just two matches side by side, and then I just kind of give you a little update. I'm not sure. We'll find out, or you'll find out in particular, in the very next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like if you want to see more. Hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. <laughs>